Bart's open camera in Lucido with a brief anecdote describing an occasion where, by chance, he stumbled across a photograph of Napoleon's youngest brother, Jerome. It was then he had a kind of epiphany. He came to the realization that he was, quote, looking at eyes that looked at the emperor. Unable to shake his amazement at the thought, Barth began his journey to discover what photography was in itself. Upon beginning his investigation, Barth tells us that the first thing he found was this, quote, the photograph mechanically repeats what could never be repeated existentially. The event is transcended for the sake of something else. It is the absolute particular, the sovereign contingency. In short, what Lacan calls the encounter, the real, end quote. Quote, the photograph belongs to that class of laminated objects whose two leaves cannot be separated without destroying them both. The window pane and the landscape, and why not? Good and evil, desire and its object, dualities we can conceive but not perceive. I didn't know yet that this was this stubbornness of the referent and always being there would produce the essence I was looking for. End quote. Quote, I observed that the photograph can be the object of three practices or of emotions or of three intentions to do, to undergo, to look. The operator is the photographer, the spectator is ourselves, and the person or thing photographed is the target, the reference. This, then, is how Bart begins his investigation of discovering the essence of what the photograph is. Quote, now once I feel myself observed by the lens, everything changes. I constitute myself in the process of posing. I instantaneously make another body for myself. I transform myself and advance into an image. End quote. So for Bart, he recognizes when the camera lens is trained upon him, everything changes. It is then the artificiality of the image becomes apparent. Ultimately, quote, what I am seeking in the photograph taken of me is death. Death is the eidos or essence of the photograph, and strangely, the only thing that I tolerate and I like that is familiar to me is the sound of the camera. Again, the clicking of the camera exposes the technological nature of the image being produced. Lars identifies two elements, the co-presence of which would seem to explain his interest in photographs. The first of these elements he calls the studium. For him, the studium, which in Latin roughly translates into a kind of general commitment, represents the reaction to photographs that do not arouse any particular acute feeling within. I chose this photograph for its general blandness and absence of anything special. The second of the elements, which is of extreme importance to Barth, is the punctum. He states that, quote, this time it is not I who seek it out as I invest the field of, stu of studium with my sovereign consciousness. It is this element which rises from the scene, shoots out of it like an arrow, and pierces me. So a photograph's punctum is that accident which pricks me but also bruises me and is poignant to me. Quote, since every photograph is contingent and thereby outside of meaning, photography cannot aim, signify aim at a generality except by assuming a mask, as in the portrait of this picture, William Casby, photographed by Avedon. The essence of slavery here laid bare. The mask is the meaning insofar it is absolutely pure. Quote, very often the punctum is a detail, a partial object. These seemingly minor details can be easily overlooked, but it is precisely these things that frequently give rise to the punctum. Because the punctum is such a personal kind of thing, this photo may or may not evoke the feeling in you. So for us, there's no prescription for where the punctum is. It accidentally arrives. The punctum, we can say, is largely a game of chance. When a photograph intends a particular effect that becomes artificial in the eyes of Barthes, this dilutes the potential of the punctum. While he cites a photo of nuns and drag queens, the best I could find appears here. The intentional juxtaposition of nuns appearing in this way would offer Barthes no punctum, only irritation. Quote, the stadium is ultimately always coded, the punctum is not. That is to say that the studium is there to be dissected and analyzed. Good curves, good lighting, the role of thirds, it can be definable. The punctum is another kind of things. As Bart says, the effect is certain but unlocatable. It does not find its sign, its name, and it's sharp and yet lands in a vague zone of myself. Bart adds one last thing about the punctum. Whether or not it is triggered, it is an addition. It is what I add to the photograph and is one nonetheless already there. This brings us back to the detail. Everything in the image is already there, but some are coded and some are not. It is the uncoded element that, while already present, escapes the constraints of prescribed meaning and leaps out to pierce you. Quote, with regard to many of these photographs, it was history that separated me from, from them. Is history sim not simply the time when we were not born? I could read my non-existence in the clothes my mother had worn before I can remember them. History is hysterical. It's constituted only if we consider it, only if we look at it. In order to look at it, we must always be excluded from it. Quote, I had discovered this photograph by moving back through time. The Greeks entered into death backwards. What they had before them was in their past. In the same way, I worked back through a life, not my own, but the life of someone I love. And her final fatigue, and in her first photograph, for me, the last, but it was also at this moment that everything turned around and I discovered her as into herself. 
So, quote, this course combines signs which have reference, of course, but these references can be and are most often chimeras. Contrary to these imitations, in photography, I can never deny that the thing has been there. There is superimposition here of reality in the past. <coughs> For Bart's past and present collides in the photo. The image records that which has been. Quote, the photograph is literally an emanation of the reference. From a real body which was there proceed radiations which ultimately touch me, who am here. The photograph of the missing being, as Sontag says, will touch me like the delayed rays of a star. So for Bart, the photo transcends temporality, reaches across the abyss, and touches us in strange and uncanny ways. Quote, the photograph does not necessarily say what is no longer, but only for certain what has been. The distinction is decisive. In front of a photograph, our consciousness does not necessarily take the nostalgic path to memory. How many photographs are outside of individual time? But for every photograph existing in the world, the path of certainty. The photograph's essence is to ratify what it represents. So Bars contrasts the photo with writing. For him, writing fails to give him the same certainty that he finds in the photo. For him, and perhaps us, the photograph goes beyond the capabilities of language. It lies in the punctum. We cannot describe it, but it is nonetheless there. So matter tame, quote, quote, matter tame. Photography can be one or the other. Tame if its realism remains relative, tempered by aesthetic or empirical habits. Mad if this realism is absolute and, so to speak, original, obliging the loving and terrified consciousness to return to the very letter of time. A strictly revulsive moment which reverses the course of the thing and which I shall call, in conclusion, the photographic ecstasy.